I've been using grep for years and I recently discovered something that surprised me and I thought it was worth making a video about. This all started while I was working on writing my guide to regular expressions. I was trying to test out my knowledge of quantifiers using the grep command just to make sure that I actually understood them well enough to be writing a guide on the subject. This command here is pretty simple. It just echoes a bunch of A characters and then it uses grep with the dash E flag to use extended regular expressions and it looks for any occurrence of an A that's repeated exactly three times. If you remove the E flag, it uses the basic regular expression mode. So in this mode, you need to escape the braces in order for it to work. Since I was searching for occurrences of exactly three A characters, I found it useful to experiment with the O flag. The O flag is useful to use because it will cause grep to print out only the matched part of the text on a single line. So if you don't include O, and then say you include a bunch of other text afterward, you get all of that text, whereas with the O flag, you only get the individual matches. One of the things I was testing was seeing how these fixed length quantifiers work with either the lazy or possessive modifiers. So you can use a question mark to uh, make this lazy. In this case, you wouldn't expect the question mark to actually do anything since there is really no option and there's really no, di no difference between greedy or lazy here. The same thing would be true if you make the quantifier possessive. And this is where I ran into what I would expect to be the bug because, because here we're specifying an A character of length three and the plus means that it should be possessive. But since I'm using the O flag, I would expect this to actually have each individual match on a single line. So if I change from extended regular expression mode with dash E to dash P, Perl compatible expression, regular expression mode, I get the expected result. So this right here is what I consider to be the bug case. And this video is gonna be about investigating why this happens with the dash E flag, but not with the dash P flag. What I found out really surprised me, and I'm not lying when I say that it will change the way I use grep forever. So the casual user of grep might just try and put in a regular expression, and if it doesn't work, you know, try escaping some stuff. And you may also consult the man page. And then you'll see this first result here that says the E flag interprets it as a regular expression, so you might use that. But for the most part, you're probably not gonna read all the history and documentation and uh, specifications. Uh, and that turns out to be very important here. So let's actually read some of the documentation. So this part is very important if you want to master the use of grep. It supports three versions of regular expressions, the basic regular expression, extended regular expressions, and Perl compatible regular expressions. If you don't specify any flags, you will end up using the basic regular expression mode. The dash E1 was the one we just saw. This is the mode that has that weird bug we saw and the Perl compatible regular expressions behave the way we expect them to. And just as a note, the dash G flag will explicitly interpret the pattern as a basic regular expression, which is the default. So to really understand how grep works, let's just download the source code and then see what it does ourselves. So let's go ahead and grep through the source code for grep and try to find out where the main method is. So it's in src grep.c, not surprising. So here's the main method. Let's go ahead and search for the P flag from the Perl compatible regular expression mode. So just reviewing, this looks a little bit like where the options are parsed. So this OPT, get non digit option, that looks to me like exactly where the arguments to grep are parsed. So there's our dash E flag. So it sets a matcher called egrep, P 
unsurprisingly sets a matcher called Pearl, and G sets a matcher called Grep. So let's try to find a place in the code where we can actually relate these to something and try to figure out different uh, parsing and compiling methods that are used. So we'll search for egrep, and conveniently we get to this list of matchers. And if I'm not mistaken, this has a couple function pointers. So for each of the matcher types, uh, let me just delete these other ones that we're not thinking about here. So these are the three modes that we're concerned with here. So the basic mode uses this function to execute the search, this function to compile it, to compile the pattern. So interestingly, the, the compile and execute functions are exactly the same for the basic and extended modes. Uh, but unsurprisingly, for the Perl compatible expression mode, uh, these are completely different functions. And basic and extended look like they're just separated by this flag here. So let's go ahead and look for instances of this function. And we'll try to understand more about how it's actually compiled. So there is a declaration for it. Uh, let's see if this is actually the implementation for that function. So df. Uh, okay, that looks like that might be the implementation. So just an interesting aside, based on what we just learned, since the compile and execute functions are the same for the basic and extended mode, that should mean that if we just use the basic regular expression mode and escape these, we should get the exact same result, which is what we see here. So it seems like what we think is the bug occurs in the with the dash e flag, but also with the uh, normal mode, which if we use dash g, it does the same thing because dash g just means the basic regular expression mode. So here's a function called regex compile. That looks really promising. Let's follow after re compile pattern. So that's not in this file. So let's find out where that is. So that looks like that might be the implementation there. In edge comp. Here it is. So let's follow after re compile internal. So what I'm looking for is some kind of information related to the parsing rules for quantifiers. So I'm gonna go on a hunch and just search for, say a quoted question mark. There we go. These are definitely parts of regular expression quantifiers. So the question mark symbol, when it's by itself, it means to take either zero or one of something. But if it comes after an, another quantifier, it means to make that quantifier lazy. So let's search for instances of this and see what we find. So here's our first clue as to what the problem is. There's this comment that says in BRE, basic regular expressions, consecutive duplications are not allowed. And based on the terminology used in here, it seems that uh, any of what we would what we call quantifiers are actually called duplications in the old regular expression syntax. And so here's a pretty useful comment. So this is exactly the case we're considering. So that would be the open brace character. This is checking for the optional comma to specify a range, just like these examples in this comment. So that was a bit hard to follow, but it looks like what it does is it just parses the range for the quantifier. There's no logic in here to actually deal with a question mark following one of the range quantifiers. 
So once I saw this comment, I knew that what I really should do is go back to the actual specifications for basic and extended regular expressions and make sure that I actually understand them. So this is a document that I found that looks uh, like a pretty formal standard specification, and it discusses basic regular expressions and extended regular expressions. After I read through a bit of this document, I was actually pretty surprised at how crippled basic regular expressions and uh, extended regular expressions are. It turns out that a lot of the common regular expression features that I use are absolutely not supported by basic or extended regular expressions. Without going into too much detail, basic regular expressions are pretty much a subset of extended regular expressions. Except in order for special characters to have their special meaning, they need to be explicitly escaped. Whereas in extended regular expressions, they automatically have special meaning. Now the word extended in extended regular expressions might mislead you to believe that they're a very modern version of regular expressions, but they're actually not. They're really just the more extended version of the very crippled basic regular expressions. And this line of the documentation right here looks very key in answering our question. It says multiple adjacent duplication symbols produce undefined results. So this is considered a duplication symbol, and this is also considered a duplication symbol. So if my interpretation is correct, this is actually undefined behavior. And if it's undefined behavior, anything is acceptable. Now if this is undefined behavior, this must also be undefined behavior. And this just happens to give a result that looks a lot like what we'd expect. So based on everything I've seen so far, it looks like a lot of regular expressions that you might use with the dash E flag actually have undefined behavior. But it's probably the case that no one really ever noticed because for the implementation of most of these, the output that you get looks very convincingly like something you'd expect. Realistically, I can't think of any reason why someone would prefer extended regular expressions over Perl compatible regular expressions. Every feature that extended regular expression mode has, Perl compatible regular expressions also has. And the basic regular expression mode is an even more crippled version of the extended regular expression mode. So I don't see why you'd want to prefer that either. So I said earlier that this would change the way I use grep forever, and I think it will because now I'm going to make sure that if I ever use a regular expression with grep, I am only ever going to use the dash p flag and never use the dash e flag again. So in conclusion, it looks like this is not a bug, but it is in fact undefined behavior. However, this can lead people, including me, to build up false expectations since it just works for most cases with the dash e flag. Ideally, there would be another flag in grep they would actually issue warning messages if it ever invokes undefined behavior in the regular expression compiler. In conclusion, if you want to use regular expressions with grep, you should probably always use the dash p flag. Dash p uses the newer, more featureful Perl compatible regular expressions, while dash e uses the older extended regular expression mode. Simply omitting a flag will default to using the basic regular expression mode. This is equivalent to using dash g.